hello! I was going to do a tutorial today and realized that I have gotten a lot of um, requests lately to do a vintage styling must-haves, um, basically a list of things that you need for vintage styles, uh, kind of a beginner shopping list, that kind of thing. And it was funny because I did one, it was a two-part, uh, one was products and one was tools. This was back in like 2010. And I realize now that a lot of that stuff I either no longer use because I have found new and better items to use or some of it was not even available anymore. So I thought I'd go ahead and just do this video and knock this out because this is going to be a really good beginner video for any of you who are new subscribers and I have gotten a lot of new subscribers in the last few weeks. Uh, but it will also prepare you for future tutorials and that way you will be all set when we come back to do our actual tutorials. So I wanted to go ahead and get this out of the way and hopefully it will be helpful to all of you and especially to those of you who have asked for this specific video. Um, I do listen. <laughs> There are a lot of things that will be subject to taste, especially subject to hair type. I have straight, fine hair, so the, t so the products that I'm going to mention are the ones that work best for me. But from my experience talking to other people with different hair types, a lot of these products work really well for all different hair types. So do give these products a chance, and then if they don't work for you, find something similar that works more specifically catered towards your hair type. Um, the first thing that I wanted to mention is a gel, not because it's more important, but just because it comes first on my list. So I find that having a gel on hand for shorter pieces is really, really handy, especially if I want to aim my bangs off of my face. Um, whenever I grow my bangs out to this length or even shorter, I can still style my hair and blend it in with the rest of my style if I don't want to feature my bangs in that style, and I do that with the help of a gel. So the gel that I've been using lately is my very favorite gel. This is super cheap. It was It's like a dollar something at my local grocery store, and this is actually a Memphis-based um, company. It's called Ampro. Ampro Pro Style. Um, I believe you usually will find this in the ethnic section. But it is a gel like no gel I've ever tried. I don't particularly care for the smell, but the thing that I love about it is the texture of this gel. Um, it is an ultra hold gel, but it does not get crunchy. It does not get really hard. It has almost a slick pomade feel. And it comes in a large tub like this, which I prefer to a tube. So this is the gel that I have been using religiously for both myself and my kids. My next product I wanted to mention was a dry shampoo. This is by Psst, and it's my favorite. I actually have used the Trace and May dry shampoo religiously. Dry shampoo is particularly good for teasing. As a base for teasing, it also provides a really, really good refresher for like your bangs, especially if you have thinner hair. You'll find that your bangs kind of get a little bit of that oily sheen to them, but the rest of your hair does not. This just will take that away, and you can just wear your Betty bangs a few days in a row without having to worry about wash your hair every, washing your hair every time. It's a really just a really great refresher if you want to work with second or third day hair as well. The next thing that I wanted to mention was pomade. Um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of Layrite. I find Layrite to be the best for my particular particular hair. I can use this for over a year because I do not use hardly any. I basically take my hands and just get the tips of them, a little bit on the tips of them, rub it on my palms, and then just go over my style afterwards. I do not use it um, very much at all. I just use it for control at the end if I'm doing victory rolls or something like that. For those of you who have really thick hair, I strongly recommend the Super Shine. Super Shine is a really great top coat. If you've already used the pomade for control, you can use this for shine. It doesn't add a lot of fragrance to it and it's just an amazing product. I have an actual product review that I'll link below. And I'll also link to my old uh, Layrite product review for you. Also for shine, I am a huge fan of the Vintage Glam Thermal Shine Spray, which I meant to, mentioned in my Vintage Glam video. I do not necessarily recommend this as a thermal spray, like to prep your hair before you roll it. I think that this would be a horrible idea for a thermal spray for somebody with thinner hair. However, as a top coat for shine only, it is perfect. It's just wonderful. It's like a dry oil spray is what it kind of settles down and looks like. So if you're just needing a little bit of shine but you don't want to mess with your style at all, this is a really great way to top it off with shine. As a thermal protectant, I actually prefer a water-based one. This is by Pantene. I really hate it. I prefer the Trace and May Heat Tamer Spray. To me, it is the best. And I do not use it all over moist hair like it says to use it. I actually use it on each individual section before I roll my hair with a heated set or use a curling iron to roll my hair. And I like the fact that it is water-based because it prevents it from um, kind of getting that crunchy feeling. 
If you do prefer an alcohol-based heat protectant, the Layrite um, grooming spray is a really good option. It is an alcohol-based product, but it's not got a lot of holding power. What it has is a lot of controlling power, and it's a really great prep spray before you do a curling iron set or a heated set. When you're doing your hair with a wet set, a setting lotion is an amazing option and it's something that I think everybody needs. Your setting lotion is going to depend on your needs. A lot of people really love the diluted Lotta Body setting lotion. I went from that to Motion's Foaming Wrap Lotion which is just like a mousse that you put on towel dried hair. My very favorite setting lotion now is not actually a setting lotion per se, it is a mousse and this is the Sahag Sculpt. Um, this was given to me by my stylist here in Memphis, and it is an amazing, amazing product. My, this makes my set last all day, and I did a full review, which is linked below as well. For hairspray, um, as most of you know, I have recently switched to the Vintage Glam Thermal Freeze Spray. It is the best high hold hairspray I've ever used, and it smells wonderful. My reviews for Vintage Glam products are also linked below. But in addition to that, I love and I am forever true to Elnet. Elnet has been around for a very, very long time. It still has that same lingering, strange smell that it's always had. But as far as a brushable, high hold hairspray goes, there is not a better product on the market. This stuff is incredible and it will continue to be popular in the, or in the vintage community. The next thing I talked about, that pretty much does it in the way of products that you will need. The next thing that I talked about in my last video series was um, tools that you need. So this is also going to depend on your hair type and what your needs are. The first thing I thought I would mention is coloring tools. If you color your own hair like I do, invest in a good tent bowl so you don't have to just use that bottle which is super messy, and a tent brush. This is what your stylist usually used, your colorist uses, and it just makes it a lot easier. You can just pour the contents of your store-bought color product right into the bowl, mix it up really good, and then also invest in some conditioning caps that you can use to cover your head when you're waiting for the color to process, and make sure you get some of those vinyl gloves also to protect your hands. That should be a no-brainer, but some people may not think of that. If you're planning to maintain your color at home, those are some really handy things to have. For heated styling, I like to use just a couple of things. I do use curling irons religiously to get shorter pieces like my bangs um, so that I can make sure and include them in a style. Um, I like to use a clipped curling iron on myself. And if I'm styling someone else, I like a Marcel curling iron, which tends to do this. You use it this way. Um, and the reason that I like the Marcel curling iron for another person is I find that I have a little more control. However, I do not, I'm not very adept at using this product on my own head, so that's why I have this one is for other people. When it comes to heated tools, I also use a flat iron on my bangs, especially when they're a little bit shorter than this. Um, so this is also something that I find handy just for my bangs. Hot sticks for more 1940s style smaller curls. This is the only heated set that I find produces a produces a very, very close to a wet set look. If you want to do 1960s sets, you may find that a large regular hot roller set is helpful to you. This is in pieces, it is old as the hills, and I never ever use it anymore. I used to use it a lot, but in the humidity in the south, it just really doesn't make sense to use it. So I don't use this very much unless I'm working on someone who has naturally curly hair because then it tends to hold a little better. But hot rollers are very popular. Dita Von Tees uses hot rollers. A lot of people use hot rollers to get that soft 1940s, 1950s wave. Um, but they especially, the larger ones, especially work well for a voluminous um, 1960s style. So if that's what you're after, you can invest in a set of the regular hot rollers. For brushes and combs, I tend to use um, a specific specific ones for specific needs. You don't necessarily need all of these, but this is just what I would consider to be handy to have on hand. Um, the most important being a good styling brush. The best styling brush on the market to me is um, the Denman styling brush. It um, has like an orange bed here and then it's got the little stiff bristles. This is what is really, really great for brushing through a more resistant set, like a pin curl set. In addition to that though, you do need to have a rat tail comb, which is ideal for sectioning. There's really nothing you can use that works better than a rat tail comb for sectioning your hair, for parting your hair. Um, and then, you know, it needs to have rather fine teeth. 
to shine your hair up after you have teased it, um, especially if you're wanting to do victory rolls or something more strategic like that, something that requires a little more molding and shaping, it is also good to have a natural bristle brush. A natural bristle brush will bring the shine right back in. You can just brush against your hand. If you have teased your hair and it's looking dull, you can brush with a natural bristle brush to help bring it back together, to help shine it back out, and it works really well. Um, some more things that you'll need possibly, I think, that are that come in handy. You will definitely need bobby pins. I only use the ones from Sally Beauty. They are excellent. They can be used many, many times without getting weak. They come in a silver, gold, a bunch of different colors, and they're just amazing. Waving clips of different types. These type of sectioning clips, these long duckbill clips like this, are really excellent for bringing waves back in after you have brushed your hair out with a hot set or with a wet set and you want to kind of bring some wave back in to kind of clip those waves back in place. You'll see me doing that in my Rita Hayworth tutorial. This is excellent for that. You can also bring a finger wave look with some ridges into your waves with waving clips. These are what's been used for years when it comes to actual finger waving. For pin curls, I strongly recommend double pronged duckbill clips. These are the best things I've ever found um, for, for pin curls. You can also use the single pronged style if you find this more helpful. Um, it's really a matter of taste. Please forgive my nails, they are at that stage where they need to be completely removed so I haven't bothered repainting them. When it comes to rollers, it is entirely a matter of taste. I think that everyone should have at least one set of soft rollers. Soft rollers can be either rock and rollers, like what you've seen in the past, which I love these and I use them all the time. Uh, it can be foam rollers, like so many people love, which are these right here. These are foam or sponge rollers. Um, you can also use those bendable, flexible rollers that look kind of like hot sticks, but they're not hot, they're not heated. Um, so one soft roller set is always great. I always recommend that you master one before you move on to another. Don't get a whole bunch of different soft roller sets and just try to figure out which one works best for you. Try one at a time. Uh, master each one before you move on to the next, because otherwise you're going to find you have a whole lot of rollers that you don't need. Another thing that you might find that you want to include in your vintage styling are accessories. Um, one of the things I absolutely love are grip tooth side combs. I use these all the time. I'm using one today right here. I use them all the time just to pull my hair back just for different reasons. Um, they're to me the easiest way to put the hair up. Um, you just use them to put it put into an updo. It's just really, really a great thing. And the great thing about grip tooth combs as opposed to any other brand of side combs is that the teeth actually touch and it makes them hold like nothing else. And they have them in all different sizes. This one's long, there's a medium sized one, and then they've even got these little short ones if you've got super fine hair. Clear, tortoise shell, whatever. Side combs are one of the absolute musts, I feel like. Um, and then also, um, and finally, last but not least, you've got the icing on the cake, which would be your accessories, um, your flower clips, bandanas that you might want to use, scarves, these vintage scarves people ask me all the time about. These are found on Etsy, they're found at thrift shops, they don't make them anymore, but that's okay, because you can totally, most places don't make them anymore, I don't think they really sell them anymore, but these chiffon scarves can be found really inexpensively at thrift shops and on Etsy. And then um, there's also snoods. There are places that actually make snoods. Um, there's more of like a, of a slippery machine woven style that you see in a lot of different shops. And then there's this style, uh, which was actually made by Bombshell Beth Snoods. I'm not sure if she's still in business or not, but these snoods are just great. And they were made from actual vintage patterns and they're more of the crochet quality. So snoods are also a really fun, authentic thing that you can do to get your hair out of the way if you're in a high humidity environment especially. So that's all on that. I know I'm going to have to edit this like crazy, but I just wanted to give you a list of the things that I felt like were the most important for vintage styling so that you can go out and get the things that you really, really think you need um, of this list so that you can proceed with the tutorials that you like. And let me know if there's anything else that um, you want to know about. And let me know if there's anything that you want to ask about that maybe one of these things didn't work for you and you want another suggestion. And I will do what I can to accommodate you. So. That's all for this week.